So it don't really have to be uh, somebody that's been on the way longer than you, you know, but listen to people. Listen to people. And, and if they get out of the Word, you'll know it, yeah. or, or you should. Yeah. If they're in the wrong spirit, you should be able to know yeah. it. You know, but when I was young in the Lord, I got in the wrong spirit pretty often. And I argued with people pretty often. And... It was mainly just those few you hung around. Well, yeah, but it happened often, didn't it? it did we, 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 we hung around the store too much together. That's a loafing place there. And, uh, but I realized it. I knew, I, I knew when I got angry and argued, I knew I was wrong. I mean, even if, I, even if what I was saying about the Bible was right, I was still wrong. Okay? Because I was in the wrong spirit about it. But, but try to get with people that, that's got something and they can help you. And, and I'll try to bring as many in here as I can that has something and can help you. And of course, there's people already here that can help you and, and people that's going to uh, start doing more. But... Uh, You've got to get around people that can help you. We, you know, we don't know uh, this year. Uh, like I said, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we don't know how soon things are going to happen. Uh, people, a lot of people, feel like the coming of the Lord is is close, and I and I understand that. And we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but we know we need to be ready, don't we? Yeah. We know we need to be ready. <clears throat> Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. Tonight, Kathy, uh, Kathy Center's going to preach tonight, and Lovell Stevens going to preach next Sunday night. So... <clears throat> Just keep that in mind. First John chapter three, verse one. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Who's us? <clears throat> that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. See, when you're out in the world and you get around a bunch of people that's not saved, and they just totally don't understand you. And they won't understand you unless you join in with their conversation. Now, if you join in on their conversation and you talk like they talk and you complain like they complain and, and all that, then they're not going to know that there's any difference in you, okay? And that's a very hard thing to do. We was talking about our speech in Sunday school, but now that's a very hard thing to do it's when there's eight or ten people gathered together and they're all complaining and, and talking like the world is talking and you're just standing there. You're just standing there listening, which that's okay. I mean, you know, it's better. It's better actually to be just quiet and listen than it is to join in with them. But, but they're just talking and complaining about everything and they're telling how this sickness is on some somebody you all know, you know, it's got cancer and oh, they're going to die and, and, you know, all this. And, and, and you're just there. And, and if you say anything, it's going to have to be something positive. I mean, if you obey the Lord, it's, it's going to have to be something like, well, they could be healed. And then they're all going to look at you like, no, they can't. So-and-so had it, and they died. They can't be healed. 
So, you know, it puts you in a, it, it's, it's kind of a tough place. It? <coughs> and you either got a choice of being quiet or saying something that is right out of the word that they don't want to hear. But, but the world don't know us. They don't know us. They don't understand us. Because they didn't know Him. They didn't understand Him. They don't know us. They don't understand us. If we're actually walking and, and doing it the way He did it. But it said, What manner of love that He has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Now the world don't look at you and say, Well, there goes one of God's children. Huh. Boy, ain't that something? Yeah. There goes one of God's children. They don't look at us like that, do they? No. they? When you walk into the room, they don't all just stand and salute you, or they don't bow. They don't. They don't recognize you. Yeah. They. But really, uh, the world didn't accept him, and they're not going to accept us. So we got to kind of get used to it. But that don't change the amount of love He put upon us. When He bestowed that love upon us and called us His children, that's a lot bigger thing than we realize, isn't it? Yes. It's a lot bigger blessing than we realize. How many would rather be called a son of God this morning than to be out with the rich and wealthy and drinking and partying? I, I'd rather be called a son of God. I'd rather God bestow this love upon me. I'd rather be able to say, yeah, I belong to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now. Not we're going to be. We are now the sons of God. That's what it says. It? And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. But we're already sons and daughters of God, ain't we? Yeah. Now. So I, I should walk and, and I should act and stuff like a son of God should. I have a problem keeping my head down a lot. I shouldn't keep my head down. You shouldn't have your head down. We should have our head up and say, Hallelujah, I'm a son of God. Hallelujah, I'm a son of God. And you could do too. Amen. Amen. You know, it. Uh, I wrote myself a little note here. We are, since we are now the sons of God, we are to walk like he walked when he was here. And later, we shall be as He is. Mm -hmm. See? But we, you know, He was in the flesh, and we read about how He walked and what He did, but, but now He's no longer like that, see? He's got a glorified body, and when we see Him, we will see Him as He is, because we'll be like Him then. But we're supposed to be walking like He walked now. We're supposed to be doing what He done now. Because now, we are the sons of God right now. I'm His son right now. Amen. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that you was manifest, that he was manifest, to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in sin, or no, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither knoweth him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous, he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning, and for this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might take destroy the works of the devil. 
Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Don't marvel. Don't. James said it a little different. James said, he said, don't think it to be a strange thing if they don't like you. He said, think it not strange when you fall into diverse temptation as some strange thing has happened to you. You know, if the devil is tempting us, if the devil is trying us, the devil don't have us. Okay? If you had so plumb out to the devil, if you had already went back on God and, and you had so plumb out again, he would not be attacking you like he's attacking you. See? He don't have you. Even though sometimes you feel like, man, I'm just I just ain't doing no good. I'm just not doing no good at all. He don't have you, or he would not still be coming after you. That's right. Mm -hmm. So don't think it's strange because you're being tempted and tried. And don't think it's strange because the world don't recognize who you are. The only people that will recognize you is other Christians. They're the only ones that will know who you are. Because you're, you've got that kindred spirit and, and you look at things like, you know I mean, like they do. You're seeking after the same things that they seek after. But don't think it's strange because everybody don't like you. Marvel not, brethren, if the world hates you. Now we ain't got to that part yet, have we? We ain't hardly got to the part where they really hate us. I mean, they do, but they ain't showed it. They ain't showed it yet. No. You know, I told this at, uh, Wednesday night here. This lady in another country uh, where they put Christians in jail and, and you're not allowed to preach the gospel. They had already locked her husband up. And... She was praying. She said, Lord, I cannot stand to be tortured. I cannot stand it. She said, if they come and they arrest me and they begin to torture me, she said, I'll turn every Christian in that I know. She said, I just can't stand it. And she prayed that way that night. Her husband was already locked up. Next morning, these two police officers at her door knocking on the door. She said, I come down the stairs and I told God, I said, God, now I told you I cannot stand to be tortured. I'll rat everybody out. I'll tell them wherever a Christian lives. They arrested her, put her in an old nasty cell that smelled like a sewer, she said. They came in, took her out of the cell, began to interrogate her. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God come upon her. And she began to witness to this big man. And she began to preach to him. She said, you're miserable. You're lost. And I forget what all she said. And she preached to him. They took her back and put her in the cell. Next night, they come, get her out, take her in there, interrogate her again. And, I, and, every, and, and the spirit come upon her again. And she just began to witness. Third night, that big man came to her cell and he unlocked the thing and he said, I'm not here to hurt you. He said, I want you to pray for me. He said, you're exactly right. He said, I am miserable. And he just began to tell her what his life was like. And she, for two hours, she talked to him about Jesus and prayed for him. Now, we haven't been tried like that, have we? No. And just about every one of us here would have prayed and said the same thing to God that she said. Lord, I can't stand it. I can't stand to be tortured. Or, or 
I mean, it's unreal. I, I read those, I read those uh, Martyrs for Christ magazines, and and it's unreal what people's going through in certain places, folks. And uh, but it it it. It does, I guess, has an opposite effect on me. They're not all negative. It has, it, it, it lets me know that if they can do it, I can do it. That's the way I look at it. If she can do it, I can do it. If the Spirit of the Lord can come upon her when she's being uh, interrogated or punished, it can come upon me. And the man that started that back in the 40s, the man that started that, uh, it's unreal what he went through, the torture. And uh, in the 60s, he got out of that country and come to the United States. They had him in Washington testifying of what torture that the Christians was suffering in other countries. He had scars all over his body. He had scars all over his body. They even had him to take his shirt off and show people the scars and back in the 60s and uh, he that's when the United States started trying to step into some of these countries and and change that uh, I don't know how much good it's done of course these these evangelists and and uh, these uh, missionaries that's going leaving this country all the time going to <coughs> other places but, but it has an effect on me that when I read about that stuff, I do pray for them, and that's the reason they send you that stuff is to try to get you to pray. Uh, they sent me a map of all the countries, and they've got the pinpoints on the map of what group is persecuting Christians in different places. ISIS is just a small one. They, they all kinds of groups that's persecuting Christians, killing Christians, locking them up, torturing them. And they, I got a map that shows, you know, where it's happening at. But it has a little different effect on me is because I, I do pray and I do know that if they can stand it, we can stand it. But we got to get in a place. Look at... Uh, Chapter 4, verse 18. <clears throat> I just want to throw this one in there. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So... If I'm fearful and unbelieving, I probably got a love problem, man. Because perfect love casts out fear, don't it? So if I'm not loving like I should, then I'm going to be tormented by fear. A lot of people are afraid to love. They're just afraid to love. And they're afraid, now if I really love this person and I really show them, then they're going to abuse me. They're going to take advantage of me. Yeah. So I'm just going to kind of hold back. Mm -hmm. I'll love them a little bit if it's convenient. But I'm not going to really turn loose and love people. And, and a lot of people, uh, they like to criticize other people. And usually when they do, they don't really love themselves all that good either. And they can't love other people too good because they don't really love themselves and they don't really understand that God loves them. Now that's that's my observation, okay? That is what a few people I have dealt with in my little lifetime, I have noticed that when they criticize other people, if you get to know that person that's saying little critical things about other people, they're criticizing other people. And and if you get to know that person, you'll notice that they're not really too happy with themselves. 
they don't really love themselves too good either. And they don't understand the love of God. They don't, they don't understand what He's poured down on us. They don't, they don't understand what He's bestowed on us. See, if I, if I, and I, I put myself in there too, but if I could understand how much He loved me this morning, it's going to be a lot easier for me to love you. If I can understand how much He loves me. And, you know, it's, it is a spirit. I, I understand that it's a spirit that tries to get you to talk about your brother or sister. I understand that. And to criticize other people. But I don't have to answer for you all, do I? No. I've got to answer for what I do. I've got to answer for what I do. I know there's some people I can't change. I can't change them. No. <laughs> Actually, I can't change nobody. I can influence some people. I can be a light to some people. <coughs> but I can't really change anybody, no. and neither can you. No. It's going to take the Spirit of God. Right. And then they have to be willing. Right. They have to be willing. But I can be a light. I can be a light to you. You can be a light to me. I can be a good influence to you. I can be a good influence upon my children, my grandchildren. Yeah. But I can't change them. No, no. It takes the Spirit of Almighty God to change them. Okay, I don't know how long I've been here. John didn't hang the clock that he showed me yesterday. Was that? Was y'all just joking? I was kind of. I was up here doing things and they brought a clock to the door and showed it to me. Where do you want this on? <laughs> And it, did, it didn't hit me till I think last night or this morning. I thought, was that picking at me? <laughs> yeah, they just shook their head and said, boy, he's... Well, it was, I guess it was kind of funny because we had a lady here when I first came here and made a pretty big deal over wanting to hang a clock back there where I could see it. And I guess that... that it's in the kitchen. But uh, anyway, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 10. Now, in the beginning of this chapter, he goes through what people are going to be like in the last days before Jesus comes back. He said, you know, it's going to be perilous times. People are going to be lovers of their own self more than God. They're going to be proud and blasphemers and boasters and all that. So he's telling Timothy what's going to happen before the end of time. But in verse 10, chapter 3 and verse 10 of 2 Timothy, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. So he's saying, Timothy, you know all these things about me. What my purpose was, you know how much faith I had, and all that. He said, you know, persecution and afflictions which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yeah. Amen. So he said, you know, you know what I've been through. You've done heard about it. Mm -hmm. You know how much I've been persecuted. You know all that I've been through. But out of them all, God has delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's right. So it's not a matter of if we will suffer, it's just when yeah. we will suffer. Because if you're going to live godly, you're going to suffer some persecution, okay? It's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, now, if you are willing... Like I said, if, 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 you're, if they can't tell you're a godly person and they can't tell you're a son of God, then you're not going to be persecuted because they think you're one of the world. They think you're one of them. 
So they're not going to persecute you. But if you're going to live godly and you're going to do what God wants you to do and you're going to walk the way He wants you to walk, then there's going to be times that you're going to be talked about and persecuted. And, and even like in these other countries, I mean, they go through some terrible things just to be a godly person. Let's go. <clears throat> well, no, we don't have to turn there. Yeah. St. John. Not, not the little John, but St. John. Chapter 1. St. John, chapter 1, verse 12. <clears throat> St. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe upon his name. We've been given power, ain't we? Yes. We've been called sons of God. Children of the Most High God. We've been called to walk in a new way of life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When you was a sinner, you wouldn't have been in church on New Year's Day, would you? No. You've been called to walk in a new way, have a new conversation, have the Spirit of Almighty God in you, have the love of God poured down upon you. Jesus only lived about 33 and a half years, they say. He never lived to be 34. he done a whole lot in a short time, didn't he? Yeah. Most of us done had more time than that, ain't we? Hopefully, we will get a lot more time to do a whole lot more. That's what I'm hoping for. If he don't come back soon, then some is probably going to go by the way of the grave, ain't it? But we've got time. We've got this year. Hopefully. Hopefully. We've got this year. If we will get down to business with God. If we will begin to seek Him. Make time for Him. Begin to seek God. We can do something. We can make a difference. We can change some things. We can help some people. I want to help people, don't you? Yes. I want to be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I want to be able to pray for the demon possessed and cause them demons to leave. I want to help some people. But I first got to let God help me. I've got to let God help me or I can't help nobody. Folks, he loves us this morning. I tell you, there's no way of measuring the love of God. There's no way. You couldn't measure it. And he, he wants to just fill us with that kind of love. And he wants to help us. You know, we, we talked about this week about how does certain people get away with doing certain things. And it ain't nothing but the mercy of God. It ain't nothing but the mercy of God. You know, when you don't know to do good, when you haven't heard the Word, and when no one has taught you about the Lord, you can go along... And, and get by with some things. 
But once you know the Word of God, then it's required of you to do what it says. And you say, well, I just won't study. And I'm not going around anybody that's going to tell me what it says. <laughs> and that way I won't be responsible. <coughs> it ain't going to work that way, is it? Yeah. It ain't going to work that way. Because you already have you already have the knowledge that you need to be smarter. See, he's already he's already let you all know that you need to know more. So for you to just sit back and say, I'm not studying, I'm not trying to find out anything, that way he won't require it of me, won't ask any more out of me, it don't work that way because you already know you're supposed to. But God does. The ones that know more, are there's more required out of them. But I want to leave you with this. Don't you imagine... When they was being in the Bible, when you read the stories, don't you imagine when they was being whipped and persecuted because they had healed somebody? Don't you imagine that the joy overrode the persecution? Don't you imagine that when they was, like when the early church started, they came out of the upper room full of the Holy Ghost and power and they just begin to go out and do all kinds of miracles and they was people added like 3,000 one day got saved and just over at one miracle and don't you imagine at that time there was a whole lot of excitement, oh, yeah. joy shouting, praising God I wish they'd had a video camera back then but they didn't but if we will start to see the good things happen, the persecution won't mount to nothing. We've got to seek God and see the good things happen. When God begins to do things for you and God begins to move in your life, it doesn't mean everything around you changes. It doesn't mean that everything around you, everything's just going to be wonderful. But when He begins to change you, you're rejoicing over what you're seeing instead of what's going on around you, instead of worrying about what's going on around you. Would you stand this morning? I wish we could get it. And I hope we're getting it. I hope we're getting some of it anyway. How much he loves us. Just what he wants to do. How he wants to pour out on us his love and mercy and kindness. How he wants to use us in this last day. God wants to use us, folks. He wants to use each one that's in this building. But you've got to let him speak to your heart. You've got to let him speak to your heart on what you are to do because you're not going to do the same thing I'm doing. I'm not going to do the same thing you're doing. But God wants to use each one of us. And he wants us to enjoy life. He wants us to praise him and worship him. He wants us to be full of joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And without joy, we're a weak person. We're a weak Christian without joy. So he wants us. You say, well, I can't have joy because you don't realize what's going on in my life. You don't realize all the trouble in my family or you don't realize the sickness that's going on. That's not what changes things, folks. Our joy comes from the Lord. And he don't change. He don't change. When you get up in the morning, he'll be the same as he was this morning. He'll still have everything you need. He's not slack. He's not broke. He'll still have everything you need in the morning when you get up. And we need to have joy because that's our strength. We need to worship him, praise him, love him, 
follow him because he's got everything we need. I love you this morning. I appreciate you. Appreciate you coming. We need to pray for one another. And we need not criticize or say little slurs about each other. Love one another. Love one another. You, you may do something that irritates me. I may do something that irritates you. Surely we can look over things, can we? I don't have to answer for you. You don't have to answer for me. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Let's make this year the greatest year that we've ever had. Amen. In every way that we possibly can. Enjoy every day just like it was our last day. And make it the best year. And that on December the 31st, at the end of this year, Let's be able to look back and say, God has brought me to a new place. Amen. God has moved me into a new place. I want that, don't you? Amen. I want to just move. He said if we'll draw nigh to Him, He'll draw nigh to us. If we'll draw nigh to Him, He'll draw nigh to us. We, there's so much more in there for us. Let's, let's get closer this year than we've ever been and let God work. This morning as they sing, if you have a need, well, we'll anoint you if you want to be anointed or if you just want to try this new platform out and see if it's the right height to pray. Let's, let's wear this thing out this year. Amen. We're holes in it. Yeah. I'd love to have to replace the carpet at the end of the year because we have prayed so much. But folks, we need, we need him, don't we? Yeah. We need a move of the Spirit of God. And he wants to move this year. I know he does. Come as, as they say.